We've seen in our previous class the FACIES model for rimmed platform. We've also discussed the more complex nature of the distribution of facies at the small scale on those RIM platform. What we still need to do is to look at RAMPs, and we're going to do that in this class. Yes, that's right. My field location for this class is not a field location at all. It's a city. It's the city of Doha in the state of Qatar. Qatar is a state that thrived on pearl fishing in the past, but now sits on one of the largest gas reservoirs in the world, which is a Permian carbonate. And Qatar also sits on the Arabian Gulf or the Persian Gulf, which is one of the best modern examples of carbonate ramps, hence my choice of Qatar. So let's look at the facies model for carbonate ramps. And on this diagram, you can see that on carbonate ramps, we of course do not have a well-developed reef. This does not mean that we don't have reefs. You will see that in the Persian Gulf we have reefs, but just the reefs do not form a barrier. So what's the barrier to energy of waves? Well, it's the shoal. So waves come and crash on the shoal. That shoal is typically sandy. It can be skeletal sand or it can be oidal sand. It doesn't really matter. It's one or the other. But typically you have shoals that form the barrier to energy. And that what the shoal is what allows us to distinguish between different parts of a carbonate ramp. So we have the outer ramp, which is below the storm wave base. And because it's below the storm wave base, it's dominated by shales, pelagic limestone, and mudstone in terms of uh, Dunham textures. Then we have the mid-ramp, which is still before the shoal. Now the mid-ramp is below fair weather wave base, but above storm wave, wave base. So what you end up having are thin bedded limestone, which represents storm deposits, and you can also have mud mounds present. The typical distribution of Dunham texture is more complex there. We expect grainstone, rudstone, perhaps floatstone, or even waxstones. And then we have the inner ramp. The inner ramp comprises the shoal itself and everything that is more landward from the shoal. So the shoal is wave dominated, of course. And it forms a beach barrier or a strand plane, if you want. So essentially, it's a, it's a massive body of sand that can contain patch reef, but do not form like continuous reefs. Because if it formed continuous reef, you'd have a rimmed platform. And the main texture you can expect are grainstones. And then beyond into the inner ramp, you're in a protected environment where you can have subaerial deposits. It's a very, very low angle dipping systems. And you typically have lagoons, tidal flat, supertidal sabcha, for instance, um, evaporites, paleo soil, paleo karst, etc. And the range of fabric Dunham uh, textures you expect are from waxstone to mudstones. And again, really, the shoal is where the wave breaks. And so you always want to know where the shoal is to know whether you are in the inner ramp, the mid ramp, or the outer ramp. So let's look at um, the map of, a map of the Middle East. Here you have the state of Qatar that I point with an arrow. And if you look at the detail of the bathymetry of the Persian or Arabian Gulf, you see that it's actually very shallow. Maximum depth in the central basin is maybe 80 meter, but more typical depth um, is about 20 meter, 20 to 40 meters. So very shallow water conditions on this broad shelf um, that is you know, kind of the best example we have of uh, ancient ramps. Now, the Arabian Gulf is a relatively modern feature. It did not exist for very long. In fact, it became a shallow sea thanks to melting of ice after the last glacial maximum. And this animation shows you how sea level rose from 12,000 BP to roughly 4,000 BP, 
and giving rise now to what we know today as the Persian Gulf slash Arabian Gulf. So relatively recent feature and it's dominated largely by carbonates, which makes it a very interesting place to, to study. Of course, it's no secret that the Middle East is very hot. So these are hot, shallow water, so ideal for tropical carbonates. So let's look at some of the distribution and types of fishes we can find. There's been multiple studies on the Persian Gulf. And we'll start with looking at the coastal system. So uh, Stephen Lockyer has done a lot of work on this. And if you look at the coastline of Abu Dhabi, you can immediately recognize here that there are some tidal channels. So tidal channels are very um, obvious and easy to see. But if you look at the beach, uh, the details of the beach, things that you start to see are things like storm spit. So that's sediments that are moved by storm. And here's an example of a storm spit that prograded landward in one year by over 20 meters. So, so very fast moving sand bodies on that very shallow geometry here of, uh, of the ramp. And storms are very important on these settings to move sediments. You also have in the bit more distal location, some mud flats. And as their name indicate, those are really flat, large extent of mud. And they are actually very broad extent and um, this is a beautiful fish's belt, so to speak. But what's striking is in a lot of these areas, you can see that you have a little bit of sediment. It can be those um, storm spit or some mud, but that sediment sits on top of hard grounds. And these hard grounds are indicative of non-deposition at this location. Now, the details of the hard ground is that you can see grains of carbonate and some nice um, aragonite cement that, that basically cements this uh, hard ground together. And if you look at the distribution of those hard ground in the Gulf, they actually are located mostly in the shallow areas. So where you have shallow water and not a lot of sediments being deposited, essentially you have enough time to cement the seafloor and you obtain a lot of hard ground. So that's one feature of the Gulf. Another thing that you also see in the shallow areas are mangrove. Now I showed you some beautiful mangrove in the last class. Unfortunately, in the United Arab Emirates, the mangroves are declining and that important ecosystem is lost. But historically, it used to be a very broad belt of deposition. Now it tends to be uh, built over with the constructions. And of course, because it's so arid, you also have Sabcha. We'll talk about Sabcha in a um, different class. But in general, it's an area of net evaporation. And you can see that this creates ridges, expansion ridges, where uh, minerals grow, like um, evaporite minerals grow, and basically displace the sediment. So a very arid environment here in, in the Gulf. And Sabcha are important because it's one of the few places where we know of dolomite formation, modern dolomite formation.